What's up, people? Welcome to the channel. If you like what you see, please hit that like and subscribe button. I'm trying to build up my YouTube community, and I can't do it without you. Now, I created a show, which I call On The Clock, where I take a topic, such as a movie, video game, comic book, even sports, and I talk about it for about 10 to 15 minutes. Today's topic is going to be on the last five minutes of The Making of the Mandalorian, Episode 2, which is on Disney+. Plus. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. checking out my channel this is my first video and the first episode of a show that i like to call on the clock on the clock today is going to be the making of the mandalorian episode two now i know it's a little bit late because episode three is already airing and episode four is on the way but as i say better late than ever so today's episode we're going to talk about how dave filoni basically schools the people on the panel about the making of the prequels he explains that making the prequel trilogy was almost an impossible task. How do you tell the story of Anakin Skywalker turning to Darth Vader and do it in an interesting way? A lot of people bash George Lucas for the direction that he took, but they don't give him enough credit for actually explaining how the universe was different than the original trilogy universe, how the Jedi Order worked, how the Empire became into power. But the way he breaks down that final lightsaber battle between Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Darth Maul gave me a new respect for the Phantom Menace. It also shed new light on that fight scene. That fight scene wasn't a fight against good versus evil. It was actually a fight for the fate of Anakin Skywalker. That's why the fight is called Duel of Fate. Qui-Gon is different than the other Jedis. He realizes that Jedi should love, care, and still have compassion for other people, while the other Jedis are so detached and political that they've lost their way. This is something that Yoda realizes in Attack of the Clones. Qui-Gon also realizes that he's the father that Anakin needs, and depending on how the fight goes, Anakin's life will be totally different. And of course, Qui-Gon does end up dying, and Anakin is left with Obi-Wan, who promises to train Anakin, but not because he cares about Anakin, but because he made a promise to Qui-Gon. When Qui-Gon tells Obi-Wan that he's going back for Anakin, Obi-Wan says, Why do I feel like we've picked up another pathetic life form, comparing him to Jar Jar Binks, basically saying that this is a waste of time. Obi-Wan eventually becomes a brother to Anakin, but not the father figure that Anakin needs, which is a fail to Anakin. Anakin's mother also dies when he promised to come back and save his mother, which was another fail for Anakin. He goes on to talk about Luke in Return of the Jedi, saying how Luke basically sacrificed himself for his father, not with anything that he's learned or how powerful he is with the Force, but because he actually loves his father. Now this goes back to The Last Jedi for me, where I'm like, that's not Luke. The Luke that they have in The Last Jedi is not Luke. Luke would not try to kill Kylo Ren. Now, I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, it's been 30 years and people change, which I agree with. People do change. But when you're like in your 20s, even early 30s, I can say you'll change. But once you have your morals, if you know you're not going to kill somebody, then by the time you're 30 or 40, you're still going to be like, well, I'm not killing anybody. You know what I mean? So he wouldn't kill his father. Why would he even attempt to kill Ben? Why? Because he saw a vision of Ben doing something bad it just doesn't make any sense to me not only that we're not talking about any regular person here we're talking about the kid the son of his best friend and his sister now how do you go and tell your best friend and your sister that you just killed their son well uh, uh i saw a vision of ben doing some bad stuff so i killed him and then what are Han and Leia going to say? Oh, Luke, we understand. Not a problem. Yeah, Ben was going to turn out to be a bad guy. Just doesn't make sense to me. Like, you want to take Luke and everything he's learned and the person he was from Return of the Jedi, and then you just want to take that and shove it right out the fucking window. Not only that, but how many times did Luke say, Oh, I can't kill my father. I can't kill my father. Obi-Wan even was like, Well, then the Emperor has already won. You know what I mean? Like, it just, 
whatever your plan was for Luke, it didn't work. I don't mind the fact that they had Luke on an island where he was isolating himself from people. I, can, I, I completely get that. You know what I mean? It's basically like saying, you know, you're fed up. I'm fed up with people. I'm fed up with this. I'm fed up with that. I just want to be alone. That is not a problem. Absolutely not a problem. I know people that just don't want to be around people. Sometimes I don't even fucking want to be around people. So I can completely understand that. But you cannot tell me that he's going to change his morals and actually want to kill his nephew, even if it was for a split second. So a thought like that shouldn't have even been in Luke's mind. And I, I kind of think that's what Dave Filoni was trying to say during the episode. Not in so many words, you know what I mean? He wasn't really shitting on Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi, but he was basically saying this is who Luke is and this is what Luke would have done. You know, this is what Luke did. Luke sacrificed himself to save his father. As he says, I am a Jedi like my father before me, which basically means Luke understands that Jedis don't kill. They just don't kill. That's not what Jedis do. They'll defend, they'll fight, but they do not kill. So with that being said, thank you for checking out my video. I know a lot of people won't agree with me about The Last Jedi. I know there are a few that won't, and I completely understand that. But that's why we're here on YouTube, you know, to get our opinions across, you know, have great discussions, great debates about how people think or what they think about. So if you don't agree with me, that's fine. Just don't hate on me because I think something different than you. I know this video wasn't the greatest. It is my first video, so I'm trying. And I promise you guys it will get better. You know, I'll learn to be more... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, more spontaneous and less scripted, basically. So, peace out. Thank you for watching. Click that like button, that subscribe button, and I promise you there will be more videos to come and they will be a lot better than this one you just seen.